And uh, the next talk will be given by Jasmine Dasakolde. And Jasmine was an M9 and went on to Dana Farber Institute uh, to do her PhD. And her title is the Tissue Proteomics uh, Characterization of Cycling E Multiprotein Complexes Derived from Primary Tissues by Liquid Chromatography Tandem Mass Spectrometry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about what has been my dream graduate pro, uh, project. And it is a molecular equivalent of show me who you associate with, and I'll tell you what you do. So the title, of, uh, the title that I put for the talk is uh, Insight into Cycling E1 in Vivo Functions. Now, I'll tell you first what our findings were, and then I'll tell you how we went about discovering them. We were interested in uh, identifying in vivo cyclin E1 associated protein because we had an interest in identifying in vivo functions of cyclin E. And what we have found is that uh, CDK, we have found two proteins, CDK2 and P57, that are always associated with cyclin E in all of the tissues that we analyzed. And these two proteins were, have never been described as primary interactors of this protein. So this is certainly a novel finding. We also found tissue-specific proteins that implicate cyclin E in novel pathways. Not novel in the sense that they were never described, but novel in the sense that the cyclin E had never been associated with any of the proteins in those pathways. And these are some of the proteins of interest. Uh, the third result was our identification of cyclin E in brain development. Uh, and we found that while it binds to CDK2, in embryonic brain, during brain development, there is a switch in the type of cyclin-dependent kinases that bind to cyclin E. And in adult brain, CDK5, instead of CDK2, is the main, main interactor of cyclin E. Lastly, we're interested in CDK compensation. And the idea here is, uh, what if you don't have CDK2? I, I just told you that it's a primary interactor. But what if you don't have CDK2 in the organism? Then what happens? What are the proteins bind to cyclin E? And we found that CDK1, 4, and 5 replace cyclin uh, CDK2 in binding to cyclin E in the absence of CDK2. So this was done in CDK2 knockout mice. Now, cyclin E has many functions in the cell. It's one of the very well studied protein that is involved in proliferation. Uh, but I also outline here several of the uh, other uh, functions that cyclin E also has. Uh, and the point that I want to make here is that every single one of these functions is mediated by specific protein-protein in protein interactions here and by post-translational modifications. Now I should also say here that all of these studies were done in cultured cell line and this is an important point that I'll come back to. In vivo, however, there are two types of cycling, cyclins, uh, cycling E's. Uh, E1 and E2, both have similar tissue-specific uh, expression pattern. Uh, they are both expressed during development and uh, proliferating adult tissues. And even more interesting is the high expression of cyclin E in the adult brain. Now, I want you to think about this. The adult brain is usually uh, thought of as an organ that contains mostly post-mitotic cells, i.e. cells that do not divide. So why would a protein that is known to be involved in proliferation be expressed at such a high level in a tissue where most cells do not divide? So this was a puzzling uh, fact that we uh, also wanted to investigate. As you can imagine, based on the uh, functions that I just described to you, cyclin E has been, is overexpressed in many type of cancers and is actually used as uh, a, proc a poor prognosis uh, in ovarian cancer. So now here's the problem. I told you that you can find uh, cyclin E1 associated protein in culture cell lines, but I've also showed you that the protein is not expressed in every single tissue in the organism. So the, qu the question here is, how do these ex vivo functions and protein partners translate in in vivo, in the in vivo expression of the protein? 
uh, in the culture cell lines that I mentioned earlier, cycling E was usually overexpressed, uh, which is not the actual physiological context of the protein. Uh, but it's more interesting to look at uh, cycling E functions in vivo and the model organism that we chose were mice to identify novel proteins that will tell us about novel functions, potential novel functions of cycling E. So here's the hypothesis, well, the different, ver uh, the, the different steps to hypothesis. Given that cycling E1 functions are mediated by protein-protein interactions and post-translational modification, we hypothesize that, one, cycling E forms complexes in different tissues or it, with different proteins in different tissues, with different proteins during brain development, and that the cycling E1 interactome, which is defined as the set of proteins that interact with cycling E, changes in the absence of cycling E2, so that's the other type of cycling E, uh, and in the absence of CDK2. The experimental setup that we have for this uh, to, to probe this in volume function of cycling E were as follows. We generated mice in which the endogenous cycling E was replaced by a a version of cycling E that has a flag HA tag both at the term end terminus or at the C terminus. And this allow us to purify, well this allows us to harvest organs from these mice and purify them by tandem purification. Ultimately, the, all of the analysis to identify the actual proteins are part of cycling E1 mediated complex, complexes were done uh, by liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, abbreviation LCMSMS, and this is what this is what I do. I'm a mass spectrometrist. For every single experiment, every single tissue that we uh, decide to analyze, we did six replicates for what I call the experimental uh, sample, and six replicates, at least six replicates actually, from what I call the wild type, which is the control. The wild type is the mice in which cycling E doesn't have a tag the HA tag, so the purification here is going to pull out proteins that bind non-specifically to the beads of, uh, that we use. Now this is a, a rather complicated slide that I wanted to, um, to put there to tell you that we had, an we had a very interesting challenge at the onset here. We are looking for proteins, novel proteins, that are associated with a protein that is very well studied, i.e. a lot of uh, a lot of the biology of the protein is already known. And because we are dealing with proteins in the physiological context, the majority of the protein that we're hoping to identify would be low abundance proteins. And <coughs> in my, with mass spectrometry, the, flow, the, 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 the workflow involves uh, digesting proteins into peptide, separating those peptides by uh, liquid chromatography uh, that is interfaced uh, with the mass spectrometer. Uh, and in the mass spectrometers, these peptides are selected based on their mass to charge ratio and their abundance, and uh, they are selected by the instrument and, and fragmented, and the fragmentation is the actual uh, peptide, um, is, the is the data that allows us to do peptide uh, sequencing. Uh, the, this signal is then searched uh, against uh, a database to, allow, to identify the proteins, identif uh, to identify proteins present in the original sample of interest. So in that, we had to uh, optimize, we had to optimize us the system to, uh, to increase the number of low abundance proteins identified. These are the tissues that we selected to analyze, uh, I, uh, we talk, we, I mentioned to you embryonic brain versus adult brain, and these are other prolifer these are proliferating tissues, adult tissues that we decide to, uh, to study also. We found uh, four proteins that are core proteins, two of them, CDK2 and, P20, uh, and, P5, and P27, are known cycling E1 interactors, so those were almost our con positive control, and CDK5 and P57, as I mentioned earlier, uh, were novel proteins. In terms of tissue-specific proteins, we identify cycling E as part, of, uh, as part of a component of the DREAM complex, which is a multi-protein complex involved in transcriptional repression, uh, and we also did uh, confirm, uh, so these are Western blood 
of uh, different, the different components of the, of the dream complex. And we also did reverse IPs to make sure that Cycling E and CDK2 actually were bona fide components. So Cycling E in the dream complex in the spleen is a novel, um, is a novel function uh, of Cycling E. In uh, Cycling E1, in the testes, we identified this protein DMRT, uh, DMRT7, um, that is involved in sexual maturation as a, a substrate of the cycling E1 CDK2 complex. Again, a novel and in this case, definitely tissue specific uh, interactor of cycling E1. In the thymus, uh, we identify EVI1 as a novel substrate of CDK2. Uh, this is uh, a zinc figure transcription factor that has role both in development and leukemogenesis. By IP Western, uh, we, did, we, did, we detected a low interaction between cycling E1 and EVI1 as represented in this blood here. Uh, however, our in vitro kinase assay actually identified, confirmed, well, actually identified for us that EVI1 is a substrate of CDK2 cycling, cycling E. Again, uh, a tissue specific novel interactor of this complex. In the adult brain, I mentioned to you earlier, post-mitotic cells expressing a proliferating proteins. Uh, the mass spec data uh, was the first indication that there was something different here. Uh, the number of peptides identified for CDK5 in the adult brain was twice as, as many as that for CDK2, and the opposite was true in the embryonic brain, suggesting that uh, there seems to be a switch in my, ma the major partners of cycling E1 during development in the brain. So the question now is, what is the function of the cycling E1 CDK2, a CDK5 complex? Using quantitative mass spectrometry, we determined that CDK5 and P27 are overexpressed in the adult brain. And this result, this mass spectrometry result was confirmed by Western blood, and that in, again, in the adult brain, all of the known proteins involved in proliferation are actually underrepresented, uh, again suggesting that switch. We also, uh, the next question was whether cycling E1 could titrate CDK5 away from its known regulator, which is this protein called P35, and we, det we determined that indeed it does. However, this uh, titration is not enough to abrogate the uh, kinase activity of CDK5 on a known substrate, uh, histone H1. Uh, they also the other finding in this experiment was that CDK5 uh, cycling E is not, a, is not an active complex, uh, at least for, the known, for this known CDK5 uh, substrate. Lastly, at all, uh, we were interested in this compensation mechanism. What happens when you remove E2 from the, from the mice? What happens when you remove CDK2 from the mice? And again, using quantitative mass spec here, uh, we determine that the absence of uh, cycling E2, this is the middle, uh, the, the, the middle column here, the absence of E2 doesn't appear to change the interactome of cycling e, uh, E1. However, when you are dealing with an absence of CDK2, um, other CDKs literally take over uh, in terms of, of uh, binding to cycling E by at least uh, by about fourfold. Uh, so this was a result from mass spec, a quantitative mass spec, and again we confirmed this by Western blood. This is the CDK2 knockout mice and uh, CDK1, 4, and 5 were identified in this CDK2 knockout mice, and they were not. Um, they were overrepresented compared to the knocking in which CDK2 is actually present. So in conclusions, um, I've told you about uh, these two novel proteins that were identified to be binding to cyclin E in all of the organs that we are analyzed. I've told you about some tissue specific partners that implicate cyclin E in transcription repression, in sexual maturation, and in endoreplication, as well as the TDF beta pathway. Um, I've also told you about the brain development specific partner of cycling E, CDK5 in particular, which is the major CDK of uh, cycling E in adult brain, uh, although it is not, for, it is not, is not active on known CDK5 substrate. In terms of compensation, uh, the absence of cycling E2 doesn't uh, affect cycling E1 interactome, but the absence of CDK2 um, affects the interactome by replacing um, by substitution uh, from CDK, 
1, 4, and 5. I would like to thank my advisor, Jared Marto, at the Dana Farber. I was his first graduate student, and I was allowed for a while before he brought in a lot of other uh, postdocs that are, that are listed here. This work was done in collaboration with Peter Sizinski, also at the Dana, at Dana Farber. And Junko Odajima is a postdoc in his lab who is literally my counterpart in the collaboration. I would also like to uh, uh, thank my dissertation advisory committee for all of the support in the past years, and my funding sources, Howard Hughes uh, pre for a predoctoral fellowship, the Harvard Biophysics Program, Dana Farber, and the Mayor Health Program. Thank you for your attention. Of resolution? Yeah, no, we didn't. Uh, because this work uh, using uh, primary tissues and mass spectrometry was is one of the first to be done, we uh, didn't we didn't go to that level of, of resolution. However, you can certainly do a fact sorting of the cells from the tissues well, after you harvest them to detect it. The, yes. Exactly. The other, the other po way that we can address this is by look at, looking at the in situ hybridization of cyclin E to determine which, uh, which part of the text is actually express cyclin E or DMRT7 for that matter. Yes, indeed. <laughs>